Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to create a queue using the simple queue service or SQS, and we'll see how to send and receive messages. But first, let's cover some concepts. Let's say that you have some kind of a photo sharing application and it's powered by EC2 instances. When a user goes to upload photos, you need to process those, maybe resize them into different thumbnails, as well as a high resolution version. So what you could do is when the user uploads the photo, you send it directly to a photo processing service or application that does that work. And that might seem fine until something goes wrong with the photo processing service. Even if it's down for just a few seconds, what's going to happen to the photos that you sent? Do you need to retry them? Do you not need to retry them? How do you know what worked or didn't? And this is an example of a tightly coupled architecture. So instead, we can do something like this where you decouple the main components and insert a queue in between. Some terminology here. On the left, we have a producer, and a producer sends things to the queue. And we're only showing one producer here, but there could be many all sending things to the queue. And then on the right, we have a consumer, and the consumer is going to check the queue periodically or pull the queue for new messages. So in this example, we check the queue and see if there's a new photo to process. If there is, we pick it up, we process it, and then delete the message from the queue. The beauty of this is that if your processing service goes down, everything can still continue to function. All the messages are sitting in the queue, they'll still be there and ready to pick up whenever the consumer or the photo processing service comes back online. Let's talk about the types of queues available in SQS. There's a standard queue and a FIFO or first in first out queue. The standard queue allows nearly an unlimited amount of transactions per second. This has at least once delivery, meaning that occasionally there might be a duplicate or more than one copy of a message is delivered, but your messages will be delivered at least once. This works with best effort ordering, meaning that we're going to try to deliver it in the same order that messages were sent, but sometimes that doesn't happen and things might be delivered in a different order from which they were sent. Something like this, where you'll see the two and the three got mixed up, and that can occasionally happen with a standard queue. On the other side, we have the FIFO or first in first out type of a queue. Here you can send up to 300 messages per second, or if you batch them into tens, up to 3000 messages per second. This works with exactly once processing, meaning that duplicates are never going to happen in the queue like they might with the standard queue. And as the name implies, this is first in, first out delivery. Here we preserve the order in which they were received. So something like this illustration where you're guaranteed to have things delivered in the same order in which they were received. Another important concept to understand is visibility timeout. Let's say you have a queue and there's one message in it. Consumer one is going to pull the queue and say, hey, any messages available to process? And because there is that one message, we're going to get a response back. Yes, here's the message. Go work on message one. So message one is with that first consumer. And while they're processing the message, that message is basically invisible to other consumers. And this is known as the visibility timeout. By default, it's set to 30 seconds. So that means that if consumer two comes along and says, hey, anything to process? The response will be, nope. Nothing to process right now. Consumer three comes along, anything available? Nope, still nothing to see here because the message is still invisible. And then in a perfect world, consumer one will finish the processing, then delete the message from the queue and everything has worked perfectly. But what if we're at the end of this timeout period and consumer one hasn't finished processing the message? Then what happens? Well, then it gets dropped back in the queue and consumer two comes along. Hey, is anything available? We say, yes, go ahead and work on message one. And so you guessed it, message one will be processed or at least partially processed twice. And depending on the type of processing that you're doing, that could be very bad. So if you find that's happening, you may need to increase the length of the visibility timeout to something that's more reasonable for your application. And I'll show you how to do that in a demo shortly. Just a few other notes about SQS. This allows you to have unlimited queues and messages. If you have a scenario where you need to prioritize queues, 
then you'll need to create multiple queues and then manage which one should be sent to or received from first. There's not a way within a queue to set a priority. Message payloads can be 256K in any text format retained for 14 days. So if you're going to need the messages longer, you'll need to write them to a database or S3 or something like that. Batching is an option where one batch is 10 messages and you can send, receive, or delete in batches. From a cost perspective, a batch is the same as a single message. So this is a way that you can realize some cost savings. Another concept is long polling. This basically says if the queue is empty, then wait 20 seconds to poll again rather than polling constantly. So this will reduce extraneous polling and also minimize costs. Finally, a note about dead letter queues. These are used for when messages fail to process for some reason in a regular queue. So you move these to a dead letter queue and then you can handle them separately. And that's really the sole purpose of these. It's for the failed or dead messages as the name implies. Okay, enough talk, let's go create a queue. I'll navigate to SQS and create queue. As we start off here, you'll see that you choose the queue type, either standard like we've talked about or FIFO, and also the message that you can't change the queue type after it's created. So choose carefully. Most of the time, so standard is gonna be what you want and that's what we're gonna use. I'll give it a name my first queue. You'll see some of the different configuration options here, your visibility timeout, like we talked about, any type of a delivery delay, wait time for receiving, message retention, and maximum size. You'll see the max there is 256K, and the maximum retention is 14 days, like we talked about. We'll leave everything else the defaults here. We'll keep encryption enabled, access policy basic, Here's options for your dead letter queue, the, the undeliverable messages that we mentioned. But we'll just leave all the defaults and say create queue. All right, with that created, let's start sending and receiving messages. In the message body, we'll say here's a photo to process and we'll send the message. And then we'll send a second message. Here's another photo to process send. So messages have been sent, they're ready to be received, which we can do down here. And we have two messages available to be received by our consumers. Now in a real world scenario, your application would programmatically be pulling this queue, checking for new messages, but we can simulate that by clicking on this button here, poll for messages. And polling progress over here. And both of the messages were received. If I click into this top one here, here's another photo to process. That's the second one that we sent. And here's the original one. Here's a photo to process. So our consuming application would process these messages and then delete them from the queue. I'll just manually delete these here just to clean things up. And then I want to talk just briefly about the visibility timeout and how that works. We saw that in the slides, but how does it actually work back here in the console? To demonstrate this, let me just close out of that here. I'll open up my first queue in another tab so I can basically simulate having two different consumers, one in each tab. Back here in the second tab, let me come into send and receive messages. And then down here, we'll pull for messages. And we'll do the same thing in the first tab where we're acting as the first consumer. Okay, let's scroll up and send a message. So we'll just say testing visibility timeout. I'll send that message. And then down here as the first consumer in my first tab, I'm going to pull for messages. And you'll see that's in progress there. And while that's processing, if I come back to this other tab, I'll refresh this as consumer number two, you'll see there's zero messages available here because the message is effectively invisible while it's being processed by our first consumer. After the 30 seconds passes, if it hadn't been processed, 
then consumer number two would be able to see it and pick it up and process it. And that's what can lead to duplicate processing. So if you need to change that on your queue, we saw how to do it when you set up the queue, but if you need to edit that at some point, you can just come in here to edit and change your visibility timeout here. All right, so those are the basics of working with the queue, sending and receiving messages. Let's just go ahead and clean this up. We'll delete the queue by selecting it and saying delete. Confirm. So that's it, the basics of the simple queue service in AWS. If you found it helpful, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button so it can spread to more people. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.